Hi. <laughs> well, some high expectations set. So, first start by um, letting you listen to something. Magical, isn't it? The sound of rain. It was also magical for people, the first people on Earth. They even danced to make it rain. But for them, everything was magical. Also, being healthy or being sick, they would dance. So we continued as a people, and a little bit later, Health became something where somebody high, a man on a cloud, would decide whether you would be sick, you would be healthy. And disease would be some kind of a punishment. And you would pray to get better. We continued. And then there came some very powerful people, scientists. And scientists saw patterns in health patterns in disease. And like this man here, Louis Pasteur, who discovered bacteria, he could predict for people why they would get sick, but more importantly, predict for them how they could become healthy. And that's somewhere where we stopped in medicine, but luckily for us, the rest of society continued, and they saw um, a fourth kind of knowledge, the wisdom of the crowd. And this is a very interesting sort of wisdom, because it's much more powerful than me, you, or anyone in this room will ever get alone. So, to go back to medicine, this is you. This is the patient of the future. He is, or she is, grey but she has also got her own mind, her own will, and knows what she thinks is important for her own health. The problem is that we have a burden, and that burden is the rising costs in healthcare, but more importantly, very arrogant doctors who think they know it all and who try to tell you how to get healthy. So, that is a crisis. But, luckily enough, we had uh, a crisis a couple of years ago, and there was a huge amount of companies that made a lot of profit from this crisis. And all these companies have something in common. They use the wisdom of the crowd. They use your knowledge, they use your social life, they use your taste of music, your power to take photographs, they use it all, and we all like it. So, to go back to medicine, medicine is actually nothing more than observation with knowledge. I am a surgical resident, and um, for example, this night I had a night shift, and somebody would come to me, and the thing is that there's uh, very little shit I know. So if somebody comes to me with certain symptoms, well, there's a, there's a chance that I can tell him what's the problem. But um, there's a, also a chance that I might know what's going on, but not exactly. So I would refer him to another specialist or I would call my boss. But as you see, the green field there's a lot of things I don't know, I don't know. And that is very frustrating, not so much for me, but especially for the patient, but because he has some kind of complaint, and people say, well, you aren't sick. That's just because we don't know. And to go back to this patient, uh, at the moment, um, 
in The Hague, all the um, yeah, important people in healthcare, they are trying to get some, court of, some sort of consensus. And what they are actually doing at the moment is uh, trying to divide this patient in all these little pieces. So that uh, all the specialists can say, well, oh yeah, I know a little bit of that piece, I know a little bit of that piece, I know a little bit of that piece. But nobody is actually um, capable of looking at the whole patient. So that's a problem. And um, we should actually, what all you people understand, because you are lovers of TED and you read, of course, Reddit and you use Wikipedia, you know that it's better to augment the part you don't know, of your, you know you don't know, but you know where to find it or who to ask it. And um, if we use that in medicine, ah, we're along the way. So how would that look like for a hospital of the future? And actually, that is not an answer that I am going to give to you. To find that answer, I need you. But I, more importantly, I need actually everybody that will be involved with healthcare the coming years. And with you all, there's only one thing I want to do, and that is to cultivate your curiosity. That the reason I chose medicine one day is that I am very curious what it would be like to be on a red blood cell and to go through the body. And yeah, unfortunately, that is not possible. So I come close now, uh, uh, wanting to be a surgeon. But it takes time. And I'll give you four things that what might be a trigger for you to think about this hospital of the future. And they all start with an E. The first thing is environment. An environment, Google is very good at making itself a company where you really want to work, because you get food and a gym and everything. Um, and at the hospital, we're very bad at it. If you come there, you will understand. The coffee is bad, the flowers are bad, the people are like, meh, it's bad. So, and same is actually for our society. So if we want people to uh, be healthy, why are we uh, operating somebody on the knee who is morbidly obese and then sending him back in a society where all the fat foods are very cheap? Yeah, then you have to wait for him to get fat again and to reoperate on his knee. The second is education. I really, really believe that you guys all together are a better doctor than I am. So if I explain to you what I'm going to do or what I think about, or if I give to you the information I had in medical school, I, I think that you as a patient or as a family of a patient can help me make yourself or make your family better. The same is for nurses in um, my hospital. Um, some doctors don't treat them very nice. And I think that um, I organized an anatomy class for all the nurses in my uh, uh, sort of uh, department. And the interest is huge and they are so much better now because they understand what we operate and well, I, I think that's very powerful. The third is elimination. You see the sign of Funda. Funda made it possible for us to buy houses without brokers. And um, in the hospital, we have a lot of people. There are management or things that are not really needed. And I think if, if we take them, a lot of them all away, I won't, they won't be very happy with me. But um, then we can put more people beside the bed, the places where you need people in healthcare. And the fourth is evaluation. Because if you do not know what you are doing, if you do not know how many complications you make, how uh, you are doing with your own blood pressure, whatever, you do not really know where you're at. And by this evaluation, you can also say to me, well, I'm getting operated by you, but where can I see if you are a good doctor? And by using all the data, we can tell that. So that is what I actually meant. But now the part where you come in. Today, we uh, launched a website, and it's called uh, www.dekliniek.net, because after all, we're Dutch. And um, on this website, it is sort of an 
digital sandbox. I want you to jump in the sandbox and just tell your best idea for healthcare. And other people can vote your idea up. And we will try to implement it in healthcare. In order to stop caring and start sharing. Thank you. <laughs>